Hello my friends and welcome to a new video. In the third video of this Adak Expo 24 series, I have the new products of Camus lined up for you. Camus is a company that I always have had close contact with, but they managed to surprise me on Saturday. The LC200 pedals features most of the mechanics for the pedals that I had in the LC100 pedals. The accelerator can be adapted with tension on the spring and the spring can be replaced. The brake uses a brake dampener, a tension spring and a sort of elastomer to create a unique braking feeling. I had people comment on it that it fell off, but for me, I really like the way this brake feels and demolishes the feeling you get from similarly priced pedals. The clutch on the other hand has been reworked and it seems to be set up now to create a mechanical biting point. This was a strong point of criticism I had for the LC100 V1 pedals. But they didn't stop there. With uh, haptics being ever so popular, Camus anticipated on this request and added some vibration motors to each pedal, which again I can only applaud as a new feature. Also knowing Camus, the price for this will be democratic, but it's not the technology that makes these pedals so special. They are green. One of the biggest issues that Camus encountered is not their innovation, technology or quality, but their products up until the C12 had the sex appeal of a Dacia Logan. And it's why these pedals really stand out for me. These are a pair of nice, tastefully colored pedals, and if they are as good as they look on paper, I think we have a winner here. And of course, there is more. In all these videos, you have heard me moaning about peripherals for simulated driving. Well, take a look at this. A nice Camus button box that will fulfill all my BeamNG issues and would be a very nice addition in the cockpit of a truck yeah, or any other vehicle where you have a bundle of buttons to map. While I see it pop up a lot for racing, it can certainly be used for simulated driving too. I did pose the question to a representative about other peripherals for simulated driving like yeah, indicator stocks or a very nice big normal car steering wheel, but the answer I got here was that there was nothing else in the pipeline at the moment. Mostly because the cost to develop peripherals specifically for simulated driving instead of mainstream racing is very high. The Camus C8 is the missing link between the C5 and the C12. As you can imagine, it has a constant torque of 8 Nm with higher peaks possible. It actually looks a lot like the C5 does, but it has some subtle differences. The C5 is a fancy carbon cookie box with shiny edges and a rim attached to it and was often criticized of being too fut futuristic and was even called ugly on some occasions. The C8 has a few edges here and there and is not simply a circle. It has a rev counter that is less in your face and a very neutral matte black look. The rim is slightly bigger and less suffocating the central part. I think Camus listened to the community's comments very well and although I wouldn't say it is the same uh, degree of sexy as a C12, but it is miles away from the level of the C5. The shifter on the C8s have also been adjusted, nice bigger metal ones can be found on the back. Again, a point which received a lot of criticism from the community that was handled by Camus. With three new products, Camus is certainly not the company with the most reveals at Adak, but the reveals that they did are products I can actually be excited about and that I know would actually fit my budget. Now, it's not all gold that shines at Camus. There are some issues and I talked about those with Mr. Lee. One of the biggest concerns people have is the technical support and general after sales at Camus. Now, the good thing is that the drive is there. Camus has some motivated employees that get things done. The only problem is, in my opinion, that the support framework is a bit missing. Someone to call a semi-automated mail to incident procedure, a ticket number with possibility to follow up the ticket without having to call or email. Mr. Lee acknowledges that Camus is aware of this and assures me that they are working to improve it, although in our interview it didn't become that clear for me on how it would be done. I asked him also for the Camus resolutions for 2025. Those included R&D for a quick release function for the C-Line, with the C12 as first one to receive it. A newly designed handbrakes also seems to be in the pipeline for next year. Camus showed a different side of itself at ADAC, a more sexy side of itself, and it seems they have found their core. 
the C line was generally well received by the critics and public and with the introduction of the C8 it offers enough variation between starters and advanced drivers, all within the boundaries of an affordable budget. I believe that we will see them in the upcoming months and years develop a complete ecosystem like the bottom box they were able to present at ADAC. I don't know about you, but for me, from what I've seen, I look forward in what they will have to offer. Thank you all for watching. There are still some more items to come for videos like how I like the Trustmaster T598 uh, on my first encounter with it. There is also the Wall of Momo, so if you want to see those items, consider subscribing. I will see you all next video. Bye-bye.